the Lord chose for himself as high priest, and opening his treasure house, made him rich in all good things. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Today is Monday, October 11th, the memorial of Pope St. John the 23rd. Our readings and prayers for Mass this morning will come from the memorial. And our Mass this morning is offered for the repose of the soul of Earl Wigcraft. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd, leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in Pope John the 23rd have given a living example of Christ the Good Shepherd to shine throughout the whole world, grant us, we pray, that through his intercession we may joyfully pour out an abundance of Christian charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep, as a shepherd tends his flock when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I will lead them out from among the peoples and gather them from the foreign lands. I will bring them back to their own country and pasture them upon the mountains of Israel, in the Lord's ravines and all its inhabited places. In good pastures will I pasture them, and on mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing ground. There they shall lie down on good grazing ground, and in rich pastures shall they be pastured on the mountains of Israel. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy shepherding them rightly. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want.
Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, I think, is one of those, I'll call them neat days, where we uh, can experience uh, just the growing number uh, of those saints canonized by the church, and that comes through in little ways as we celebrate today, St. John the 23rd, uh, newer than the 2011 Roman Missal, uh, newer than the lectionary, newer probably uh, than your missals, those of you who have them here today, so you can't find his prayers and readings. I had to do the opening prayer uh, out of the Ordo, which is published annually, because the prayer isn't there, but it's not translated into English in any of the missals yet. The readings come from the little supplement to the lectionary, which we had to buy uh, recently, and we'll have to buy another one soon, because the number of saints keeps growing. Uh, I like that sort of thing. Uh, and I also just uh, am struck uh, throughout this Mass today, uh, from the opening prayer through the reading selected for John the 23rd uh, of the relationship we might have with him as a parish, as that theme of Good Shepherd just emerges time and time again as we celebrate this saint today. And one of the things that's been on my heart uh, in recent months is trying to figure out who are our patrons here at Good Shepherd. It would good, be good to have a host uh, of saints that we consider our particular friends as a parish. Uh, and I won't impose them on you. Uh, that'll be a, a process that we walk through, but I'd certainly put John the 23rd on the short list uh, if we were gonna make those decisions. Uh, I've also shared this before, I think, but I, I'm also drawn to him because uh, he was bald and heavy set and gives me some courage. Uh, so Pope John the Twenty Third uh, was born in Northern Italy, 1881. Angelo Giuseppe Roncalli, uh, I believe, in Southern Minnesota. There's a Roncalli High School uh, named in his honor there. Uh, after ordination, he served in a variety of capacities: papal diplomat to Bulgaria, Turkey, and to France. He's credited uh, during the Second World War with helping to save more than 20,000 uh, Jews during that time. Elected Pope in 1958 and served until his death in 1963. He died of stomach cancer. Uh, and the reason that we celebrate him today uh, is that today, let's see, this year is the 59th anniversary, if my math is right, of the opening of the Second Vatican Council. Uh, and that is a great work uh, that we can attribute to Pope John the 23rd and his desire for the church. In the opening address that he gave for the Second Vatican Council, he said this, the greatest concern of the council is this, that the sacred deposit of Christian doctrine should be guarded and taught more efficaciously. That doctrine embraces the whole of man composed as he is of body and soul, and since he is a pilgrim on this earth, it commands him to tend always toward heaven. Now, this desire 
that St. John the 23rd had, that the Christian faith, the deposit of our faith, would be guarded and taught more efficaciously. In our gospel, Jesus said to Peter, Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. Jesus is handing on this important aspect of his own ministry to Peter. Uh, And that ministry lives today in the Pope. And while John the 23rd was in that position, the vicar of Christ on earth, the successor to St. Peter, he saw that the sheep were in need, uh, that they were hungering for the nourishment that comes to us through the body of Christ, the church. And it was a nourishment that was present, but was difficult for many people to take in. Uh, I don't know if it it falls apart pretty rapidly, but I think of uh, uh, that nourishment, delicious food that's sort of behind impossible packaging, uh, or is just out of reach, you know it's there, but I can't quite get to it. And what John desired was to make the riches, the nourishment of the faith of the church accessible to the whole flock. He wanted all of us to be able to understand more fully what we believe so that we could live it more joyfully. We can be grateful for this. Uh, And one of the ways that we can show our gratitude, we might say, is by digging in. Uh, right? So much is accessible to us now. I think of the way that the Second Vatican Council called for a new universal catechism, the first since the Council of Trent in the 1500s, and then with John's successors uh, in the person of John Paul II, that catechism became a reality, and now it's available for all of us. The food is there for us, the nourishment. Are we digging in? We can think of the ways that the Second Vatican Council called for the treasure that is the Mass uh, to be more apt for us for a full and conscious and active participation. Uh, And many of the changes to the liturgy that followed the Second Council were aimed at doing just that. Do we understand it more fully than we did? And do we participate more fully and more consciously and more actively? Are we digging into the Mass now more accessible to us. One of the ways that we can honor this saint today is by digging into the faith that he desired to be opened up for us. We might ask him for that grace, uh, to pray through his intercession uh, that these treasures which are ours may be ours more fully. We can ask him uh, for the grace to say, what is it that the Lord desired to reveal through that Second Vatican Council? What is it uh, that the church has taught us through the documents of that council and everything that's followed? That the Christian doctrine should be guarded and taught more efficaciously. Is that doctrine alive in me? If we're paying attention to the news recently, sort of recently, uh, when she was being nominated for the Supreme Court, uh, meant as a dig toward her, somebody told Amy Coney Barrett, the dogma lives loudly in you. Well, some dogma lives loudly in all of us. Uh, And is it the Christian faith that lives loudly? Uh, That's not a dig on anyone if we are living the Christian faith. The Christian faith lives loudly in you. That would be a great compliment, I think, to us. And part of what John the 23rd wanted to make possible is for that faith to be alive in us. And so we pray his intercession today that he who desired to feed and tend the flock, that he would pray for us, that we would be well-nourished, by the beauty of the faith.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. In humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sake this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept this sacrifice from your people, we pray, O Lord, and make what is offered for your glory and honor of blessed John the Twenty-Third a means to our eternal salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John the Twenty Third, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith we proclaim. We Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and Andrew, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. And may this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Good Shepherd has laid down his life for his sheep. May the sacraments we have received, O Lord our God, stir up in us that fire of charity 
with which blessed John the 23rd burned ardently as he gave himself unceasingly for your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint John the Twenty-Third, pray for us. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.